Hello friends, welcome back to my garage. This is my Jazz Radical. You might have saw my build video on this a couple weeks ago or so. And today I wanted to put on a rear rack. I like rear racks. I would say if there was a front rack versus rear rack team, I would be on the rear rack team. I think that they can carry more weight and they don't mess with your handling as much as a front basket does. I like front baskets too though. But anyway, I wanted to install this rear rack and I came to a problem, which is this mount that was on it, this type of mount, uh, this mount would not work because it will interfere with the brake cable. Because these are cantilever brakes, they have a cable that goes straight in the middle and this will exactly interfere with that. So I could not use this mount on this walled bike rack. So that's when I had to get creative. Now I did have these from I think another bike rack, a pair of these, but they also won't work in this application. It will mount to the bike just fine, but it has nowhere to mount easily at least to the rack. So what I wanted to show you today is how I got creative and attached this rack. Now it's only halfway done and I could have taken it off and <laughs> said, wait until the end to see it. But here you can already see basically what I've done. So if that's all you need to know, if that's all you need to know, you can feel free to stop watching here. You know, I'm not going to tell you to watch till the end, like, like maybe some channels do. Uh, I'd rather you save your time rather than me make a few cents. So anyway, that's what I did for the one side. And what I'm going to do is show you how I did that while we make the second one for the second side to make it a bit stronger. Although it does work like this, uh, I think having two, one on each side will make it a bit stronger. So just to be clear about what we're doing is uh, we need to have this rack where it won't slide forward and backwards. It needs to stay steady. The weight is supported down here, but the forward and backward motion is locked at this point. So we basically need something to connect to its existing mount here to here. That's the goal, connect from here to here. There's other ways you could do it as well. There is a mount down here, mounting point here that could possibly be used, but it's right behind the cantilever brake cable setup. So that's a little bit difficult to access and use. So instead I'm going to use these mounts here, which I believe that's exactly what they're designed for. And by doing that, I can go around the cable. So anyway, let's go over to the bench and make a second one of these. Now you guys might know that I'm kind of a pack rat when it comes to little pieces, little brackets, metal things like this. Even I have a whole bunch of things here, just uh, all kinds of things because this type of stuff, when you're needing to make something custom comes in such handy, comes in such handy, comes really comes in handy. That's what I'm trying to say. Really comes in handy when you're trying to just kind of do something with, with, uh, with, uh, mounting items. So I save all those mostly in here, but I have some in other places too. But in here is where I got that other, uh, kind of brass, I don't know if it's brass or what, what the metal is, but that gold colored, piece. <clears throat> and luckily I had more than one. Now this one was already bent. These were originally flat and I had bent this for another purpose and I never used it. So it was already kind of bent, but unfortunately it's not really bent in the right place. So now I'll try to show you how I figured out how to get the shape right on this one. So I simply took the piece that I, you know, needed to have. So I'm like, okay, these two need to connect to each other. What do they need to do? Well, first of all, it's twisted because this plane is about 90 degrees perpendicular. Is that the right word? Perpendicular to this plane. So it needs a twist. So before I do anything, I could see this wasn't bent in the right place. So I went ahead and flattened that out. Let's do that. In my opinion, a shop vise, a bench vise like this, just a standard one doesn't even have to be this big is pretty much a critical, part of a home workshop. I use this thing for all the time. You'll see it used multiple times in this little 
job alone. But this one also has this flat area and I don't know, nobody's explicitly told me, but I believe it's for hammering stuff. That's what I always use it for. So I'm gonna hammer this um, flat. There we go, that should work. Okay, now back at the bike, we can take the piece that I just flattened out and I can see that it needs to mount here and here, which means, to, means the piece is gonna need to be twisted 90 degrees counterclockwise in order to reach that surface. So let's go ahead over to the vise and do that twist. All right, here we are at the vise. I'm just gonna put my piece of metal in, tighten it down a little bit and I'm facing this end, so I said 90 degrees counterclockwise, and I wanna keep this surface a bit flat, so that's where I'm gonna grab on with my pliers and just start twisting until I reach approximately 90 degrees. That's pretty close. It may have to be adjusted a little bit later, but there we go. Okay, back at the bike, I can see this is the end that I hammered, so I'm gonna keep that like that. Okay, now it's getting pretty close. Like we can reach here, we can just about reach here, but you can see this now does actually need to be bent that way because it's the whole thing needs to, if, if this were mounted like that right now, uh, we need to come over that way quite a bit more, you know? So we're gonna make a bend right here. Uh, just gonna approximate the angle. Now I don't need to use a hammer. This is quite thin material. So I'm just simply bending it like that. Okay, maybe a little more. Okay, I could probably even bend it by hand. Okay, let's see how that fits. Okay, that's actually getting really close. One side is duller and one side is more glossy, so I decided to make the glossy, shiny. I'm gonna make the shiny side go towards the outside. So it's gonna go like that. It's still a little bit off. Um, I think we may need to bend it a little bit, a little bit more that way. It's, it's gonna be kind of a, a muscle thing ultimately because we also have this one to deal with. Um, but yeah, we're getting pretty close at this point. I'll go ahead and take this bolt out so that I can start trying to line them up. I'm gonna see if I can just kinda, yeah, I can bend that by hand even, so. That might have been a bit much even, so. This is gonna take just a little bit of muscle and kinda force. Um, but first I'll put a bolt through here to kinda Hold it steady. I bought this uh, bolt set uh, on Amazon a while back and it's been a real time saver just having all these five millimeter uh, hex key driven bolts available whenever I need them. So uh, I'm just grabbing out two of the short ones. I find the short ones I'm using more than the others. Okay, what I'm doing now looks a little bit weird, but I was having trouble getting the threads started on this side of this, this mount. So what I'm doing is I found w one of those uh, bolts in my kit we're just long enough to reach here. So I'm gonna to try to clean up the threads by running this bolt through through this side to hopefully straighten out any kind of damaged thread we have there because I just couldn't quite seem to get that going straight. In, in general, the threads feel pretty crusty. Maybe there's some rust in there, but it is moving. And so the idea is that I'll, the, the bolt will come out in a minute uh, on this other side and clean up any debris or damage to that thread and allow me to thread it correctly uh, through the other side. Now it's moving more easily. Let me put a little bit of lubricant on it, on the bolt. Oof, yeah, now it suddenly got really hard right at the end. Mm. It's a little bit scary at this point because of course I don't want to damage the threads or anything, but I do need to clean them up. So I'm adding some more torque onto the end of this hex wrench. Ooh, ooh, that does not sound good. Why is it so messed up? So, right, I'm uh, using this, this little wrench to try to increase the torque I can put onto this Allen key, or this hex key. And I'm kind of going backward and forward at this point to try to work out whatever's going on in here. 
it's smooth up to here and then suddenly it gets tight. Now I, I can put way too much torque on with this, with this uh, wrench. So I have to be very careful. We don't want to break the head off of this bolt, that's for sure. So I'm going forward, going backwards. I think I'm going to take it all the way out. And then I'm going to blast some uh, lubricant through here. Okay. I'm going to try to run it through again. It's going really easy at this point. I think there's just something really wrong something boogered up with this thread right towards the front. So I'm hoping and thinking that we'll be able to clear this out here. It seems to be moving a little better now. And it is right at the surface, so. Okay, we're, we're basically out the other side, so this force that I'm applying is is actually cleaning up that thread right now. It's forcing it, hopefully, to be correct. And we're almost at the bottom of the head, uh, the bolts. Ooh, that's getting hard. Range as well. That's about as far as I want to go with it. And the bolt is completely coming out. So I think, I think I'm going to stop there, back it back out and then try to access it from this side and hope like heck that it works. Okay, good news. The thread repair was a success. We can now run this thread without too much trouble. So that's great. All right, back to where we were. Now this was gonna fit like this. Does that fit through there? Uh, not quite. It's almost fitting in this hole, but not quite. That might be a what is it? 4.7 millimeter, 3 16th inch hole. Whereas it's, this is probably, this is something from my grandpa actually, who's passed away 25 years ago. Um, and this is a much more modern bolt. So that's a metric. And this is probably a standard, probably, I think it's 3 16 4.7, whereas this is a five millimeter bolt. So it's a little bit too big, but we might be able to thread it through. Yes, we can. So that's one thing you can do with with uh, 4.7 and five few millimeters difference. A few millimeters difference uh, usually isn't such a big deal. There we go. And that's gonna go like that. So I'm just gonna loosely get that on there and put the other one back loosely too because I had to take it off. Okay, this is where we're at now. I have these both just loosely on here like that. I went ahead and took this other bolt off so I could move this forward and backwards. And the one negative thing I kind of thought about just, not just now, I guess, but one negative thing about this system or the way I did it is you really aren't gonna have any control how to adjust your uh, rack forward and back. Due to the set length of these pieces, it's gonna be set wherever it is. Luckily, not, well, sort of luckily, this is pretty, pretty close. I think it's pretty much right, so. If it's not, then I don't know, I have to remake these um, longer or something like that. So now I'm just gonna probably, there is a little notch here, which isn't exactly helpful for us, but we're gonna try to muscle it together and see, see what happens. So you can watch as I do that. So first I'm, I am gonna line up these two holes for these, these pieces. Go ahead and I got like a longer five millimeter bolt, stick through there. This is the same kind of 4.7 millimeter hole, at least, I think it is at least. So it takes a little bit of kind of threading to get it to go through, but it's not a big deal. Okay, there we go. Now, <clears throat> a good bit of that is sticking out the bottom. Now all I have to do is just line this hole up like that. Okay, that actually went way easier than I expected it would. So now I can None of this is threaded, but because there's so much tension and pressure on all the members, I can, uh, I can actually kind of thread it down like that. There we go. All right, it's a little bit hard to get the camera at that angle, but basically now you're looking up underneath the rack and you're looking at the bottom of the bolt. I just want to show you 
the, uh, the nut that I'm using to stick it in there. It's one of these lock nuts. Basically it has some kind of Teflon in it, so you don't really need to use a washer or anything with this. So I'm just gonna stick that on there, get it started, and it probably won't go super far because of the type, type of nut that it is by hand anyway. So what I'll do is I'll hold it with this wrench right in there. And then at the top, I'll, I'll tighten it down. While I'm doing this, I will say I've had a lot of fun with this bike. Um, it's kind of funny when I first put it together and, and rode it around the block a couple times, I was like, eh, it kind of feels like my Gary Fisher, which I recently just sold, but just way heavier and like just not as nice in pretty much any way. And, and it's true, it's probably not as, nearly as nice as my Gary Fisher 1997, 1996, excuse me, Gary Fisher. Um, it's kind of like that bike, but worse in pretty much every way. Um, it's just really heavy, you know, fully rigid, just lower quality parts all around. But now that I've been riding it around and uh, taking it to the store and stuff, I actually like it. I mean, it's a fun little bike. It's not fast. Um, it's not good at tricks. It only has one speed. What I say by tricks is, I mean, I can't really wheelie it too good with this gearing. And it just, I don't know, it's just heavy. It feels clunky, but it kind of reminds me of like a beach cruiser or something. And I think it looks cool. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the bike and I don't know how long I'll keep it but uh, keep it around for now. I've been taking it to the store, stuff like that. Really short trips, like, you know, talking like 30 minute trips. I wouldn't probably want to ride this even an hour. I mean, sure you could, certainly it would work. But for me, this is like a 30 minute trip to the store type of bike. It's nice having the kickstand, convenient. Again, because I don't care about weight, I left the kickstand on. All right, there we go. That feels pretty good. Last thing to do, of course, is tighten these stack all the way down. Same thing on this side. I don't really know what these pieces of metal were. I think maybe they were like uh, name tags or something. You'd put like on a door or a desk or something. Anyway, that's it. Let's take it off the stand and see how it looks. I'd say it is tilted a little bit down to the front but it's really minor. I'm not worried about it. It's pretty much dead on straight with the tire. Very slight downward tilt. It would be better if it was maybe, you know, half an inch back, but I'm probably just gonna leave it as is. Let's see how strong it is. Yeah, it's strong. I mean, mainly the weight is carried down here. This is more for forward and backward, but even that's plenty strong, so. so there you go. Let me know what you think about the looks, because I think I don't care for the looks. The gold doesn't really match the rest of the bike at all, but on the other hand, that kind of does match the rest of the bike, which is that nothing really matches. So, I don't know, let me know what you, in the comments what you think of the looks. Um, this is just a video about how you can use some creativity and some scrap pieces to kind of you know, come up with a solution. So thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Bye.